Welcome to the Moved to Meditate podcast. I'm your host, Addie D. Hilster. If you're a yoga practitioner or teacher who knows that there's more to yoga than poses, but you're wondering where to find that, come join our quiet little party. Here you'll find resources to help you deepen your practice as well as insightful conversations with yoga, movement, and meditation teachers from a range of traditions. On this podcast, we spotlight the more contemplative aspects of movement practice. So we talk about all things gentle yoga, meditation, yin, restorative, yoga therapy, mindfulness, and more. Listen in and connect to a community of like-minded practitioners. Hello, everyone. This is Addie, and it's great to be back with you for a new episode today. Last week, I was off and I was participating in an online meditation retreat and not teaching my usual classes or doing my usual work, but I had the opportunity to lead daily yoga sessions for the group and then practice along and do the retreat with my friends at the Bodhi Path organization, which was very refreshing and really wonderful to have that opportunity to take a little break and slow down and practice. So I'm back this week, and this episode is part two of a conversation that I recorded with my husband, Mike D. Hilster. If you heard the part one a few weeks ago, just like the first half of the conversation, we shared quite a bit there about our history and how we met and some of the different places we've lived and work we've done and how yoga and meditation wove through all of those experiences. In the second portion of the conversation, you'll hear more about how we connected with our first meditation teacher, when Mike actually let me practice my teaching skills on him early on when I was in my yoga teacher training and how he really felt about that. <laughs> and how he eventually, despite that, developed his own 20 minute personal yoga practice that he liked and decided to do on his own and how our practices eventually expanded beyond our initial goals like stress relief to really being a way of looking at the bigger questions in life. And I was delighted in the meantime to hear from a few of you that you enjoyed that first episode with us. Mike and I kind of worried a little that it might be self-indulgent to just sit and talk about ourselves. But we went for it because we thought, you know, people learn from stories and it might help someone to kind of reflect on their own path and how they want to practice and why they even want to practice. So it does seem like it did that for a few of you from what I've heard. So yay to that. <laughs> One more thing before we jump in. I want to mention that we have a little special running at the Moved to Meditate class library for the next two weeks. I'm offering a really good deal on a six-month membership. The class library is my online collection of mindful therapeutic yoga classes and meditations. The classes range from as little as 15 minutes to up to an hour, so you can fit it into your day. And you can go on there and search by style of yoga, flavor of class, or body part that needs attention, or <laughs> whatever you need, and find just the right practice on any given day. We have two different, very affordable price tiers. One is called the library tier, and it includes all of the recorded classes at $14.99 a month. And one includes all of the library classes plus access to my weekly live sessions, and that's $34.99 a month. And normally, I don't offer a six-month membership, so this is actually a great opportunity to save a little bit extra. And because I know some of you don't like the idea of a monthly payment, this is inspired by you. So the library tier is only $79 for six months, and the library plus live stream tier is going to be $188 for six months. I think it's a really good deal. <laughs> and you still get your 14-day free trial before you're ever charged. So if you decide you don't like it, then really no risk. If you've been curious or just kind of waiting for the right moment to give the class library a try, now is a great time. 
And the six month memberships are only available through May 6th. So please jump on it. And you can go check it out at movedtomeditate.yoga slash class library, or find the link in the podcast description and get all the info. Do feel free to reach out to me with any questions about that special or really any feedback at all about the podcast. I absolutely love to hear from you and I'll get right back to you. (laughs) So, all right, let's go ahead and hear this episode with Mike. And we're just picking up the conversation right where we left off a few weeks ago. We had just finished talking about music school and some of our early yoga experiences. So here's the conversation from there. Yeah, so interesting that you really started to meditate before you started to do yoga. And it was the reverse for me. I had the yoga practice for a long time, which you saw me doing, but you weren't doing (laughs) I wasn't. And then yeah. I went to, to Long Beach meditation and got really, really interested in the meditation teachings. And um, it was insight meditation, like you said, mindfulness, but from the mostly Theravadan Buddhist tradition. Although our teacher, Victor Bird, was pretty eclectic and he was also a psychologist and he would quote Krishnamurti and he would quote um, different psychologists and young and like and poets and, and poets and like yeah all this stuff and um and victor is from tennessee and he was this like tall <laughs> skinny dude he was really funny really really funny and sarcastic and he was also a musician and also taught yoga (laughs) when we would do like day long retreats he would teach yoga he was certified in yoga and he was um, perfect for us he was the perfect connection to to like make us comfortable (laughs) with these new concepts yeah you know like talking southeastern conference football for crying out loud (laughs) at least a little bit with your meditation teacher so it's yeah it made us feel like this was something that we could fit into that made sense for us and Mm -hmm. yeah it helps when you can kind of see yourself in it in that way. And yeah, like that kind of, we were so lucky that we kind of made that kind of connection with a teacher who is a really deeply practiced person. And he really, really knew his stuff and oh yeah, um, was a very good teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that kind of covers the meditation introduction. I didn't start actually doing yoga until after you became a teacher and really the reason that happened was because I was your guinea pig when you, when you practice teach, <laughs> teach. Oh my taught. god! But it was so hard to yeah. teach you. <laughs> Whenever oh I gosh. train people, I always tell them that the people you know the best are the hardest ones to teach because they will <laughs> talk throughout it and give you feedback while you're trying to tell them <laughs> tell them the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so man, I, I would be teaching him like a warrior two or something, and I'd still be talking about how to bend your knee in the yeah. right direction. And he'd be like, what do you want me to do with my arms? And I'm like, shush, <laughs> I'm getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're jumping ahead because, <laughs> you know, I will say that, you know, it. I, I absolutely wanted to be helpful and supported, but it also felt like I was doing it under duress. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you, so Sorry. And, you know, I'm like, oh, this is, I, you know, I don't want to be doing this right now or whatever, you know, but, but you start doing it in the spirit so of being supported. Everyone who's enjoyed my classes, you can thank Mike for <laughs> helping that happen. You want me to do what with this strap? Come on. Um, that's so funny yeah but but really that was part of it and that's a really funny memory of of doing that with you but also you had the gumption to just go to our local park in van nuys at the time sherman oaks area Mm -hmm. and just start teaching a class in the park like four people like Three like of whom people. I worked with and you. <laughs> and me, exactly. So I was going out and you did that. I remember you did it for 18 months, even yeah. after we moved across town. And Well, I thought we would do it like once for practice. And then people, the people who came, like the four of you were like, that was great. Let's, can we do it again next week? 
so we kept doing it and then we made some flyers and then more people kind of would trickle in from the park sometimes and come back for a while and it kind of became a thing and it did yeah yeah they people got used to seeing us there all the little soccer kids and soccer moms and and soccer coaches a lot that of one really intense in soccer coach he was intense yeah he needed some <laughs> yoga he needed some yoga um but that's that's where and so you were a newly minted teacher you were teaching well already because you've just been a really good teacher thank you um, of things almost no matter what it is you're very good and <laughs> so i just i learned poses you know and that's sort of the start of it and it you know the poses aren't in and of themselves really a thing but it gives you a framework to you know listen to your body which is what i ended up doing so i pretty much took the classes and you always had kind of this set warm-up which took about 10 15 maybe 20 minutes if we in an hour-long class and i took that 20 minutes and i did it a lot in the morning mm -hmm. on your own in the morning i'd turn you know i'm i'm a bad yogi sometimes i'd like turn the tv <laughs> i've been watching espn and i'm doing yoga but i'm i'm doing it and you know i'm so and i do things out of order and i started eventually just changing things around and you know hey what is what is it that my body actually needs mm -hmm. right now this morning you know did i but see that mindfulness sleep? was still there with sports center and all because you're <laughs> <laughs> tuning in to what felt good. I mean, so I'm guessing like yoga in the park is when you started to realize that you enjoyed this and there were things that felt good and you remembered I, yeah, those I, things. I felt a benefit, you know, and, you know, as our bodies start to age, you know, there's a phrase that I've always got in the back of my head, you know, move it or lose it. And, you know, that's <laughs> maybe a, maybe not the greatest of phrases, but it's there. And, there's a little nugget of truth in it. You know, you want to keep your body moving. And that sounds you know, like as, something your mom would say. And his mom, she for probably context, did. <laughs> she had very severe rheumatoid arthritis for her whole adult life. And so she was very much about like knowing when to rest, but also how to keep herself moving. Yeah, and she couldn't she, have done like what you were doing, but no. I think you maybe were like influenced by you can do this and you can help take care of your body and you can help keep it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, feeling good. And, and I've gone in and out of my on the mat practice for sure. Like I, you and I were talking earlier that, you know, I haven't done too much of it since we moved for various reasons, just the move. We're getting used to a new place. I've got a brand new job I'm getting, um, kind of into and, um, but, you know, it's always there and we're, you know, we're hiking and, you know, the, the mindfulness stays with me off the practice because, you know, I sat on a cushion and meditated as, as well. You know, I've done day long retreats at least, um, you know, I've gone deeply enough that, you know, conscious, sometimes it comes on me unconsciously now, the mindfulness and then the spontaneous I need to, moment of yeah, mindfulness right mm -hmm. um you know almost my my brain and my body rescuing me from myself <laughs> like hey totally sl slow down see take a breath and that helps and you know and then of course just being able to in a in a moment say okay i i need to re-engage with with the mindfulness field <laughs> with the mm -hmm. um with what's going on around me and and breathe deeply and and be here so yeah and i love that and i always loved that you had developed that like kind of little 20 minute routine that it varied a little bit you kind of you had you had kind of like a a set couple of things that you would do it gave you something to sort of like hang your hat on i think structurally as far as a little mm -hmm. yoga routine and I always, I thought that was great. And I wish more people felt like they could just take the 20 minutes of their favorite movements and just like do them in the morning, like you did. Cause I think a lot of times people are afraid of like doing it wrong or not having 
the guidance or getting hurt or something. And you could totally pop on a 20 minute video that you like and do it like certainly how I started my practice. <laughs> it's certainly <laughs> yeah. available. You know, that's our, our class library is meant to be a resource like that. But like you, you just, you cultivated this, this kind of self-practice and I'm curious, like how you would describe the benefit of that or like how you came up with that and how, what you would tell people if they're interested in making something like that for themselves. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So the way it, I mean, so I, I had to learn poses first, like there had to be a framework for engaging with your body mm-hmm. that wasn't kind of the typical go to the gym and lift weights or get on a bicycle and ride or a stationary bike, etc. You know, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with those things. You know, fitness is a, They're great. a, good, a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't do that a lot. I mean, we, we, we did some running when we first moved out to California. Um, but my, my knees are a mess now. So I, I can't do that as much. And so, yeah, just listening to your body, you, you really, you know, yoga classes and learning poses gave me the framework to feel and hmm. find out what I need. So if I slept weird on my neck, I could prioritize that and the parts around that, you know, golf is seasonal i like to do that and definitely seasonal here in washington (laughs) for sure right um (laughs) you know but you get you get out there for the first time after a layoff and you were going to feel that the next few days young or old i think and you know i wanted to support that activity that i enjoy so Mm -hmm. you know finding ways to strengthen my knees finding ways to strengthen and get flexibility in my wrists to get hand strength. Um, you, you know uh, that I have really hypermobile shoulders mm-hmm. and for that can be a good thing in golf, but you need the strength too. Um, so doing things like that, I remember you teaching me rhomboid p- pushups, <laughs> you know, and so I would always do cat cow and then I'd do those rhomboid push-ups while I was sitting there in, in that table position. And um, yeah, I, I think, you know, what is it that you need? What is it that you want your body to do? Maybe that's a good jumping off point. You know, mm-hmm. what benefit can you get? It doesn't have to be just for the sake of doing it. It can, it can be for a purpose to make your life better. And mm-hmm. that's kind of where I got it. And then, And I realized that 20 minutes was about right for me. It doesn't have to take very long. And, you know, if you do 20 minutes, you're going to feel in the morning, especially, I always just felt better and energized and Mm -hmm. and I'm a morning person. So that was like even more, more energy, but physical energy and not just mental. So yeah, I, I think you, you, and you just have to be willing to carve out the space and it, and it's okay to watch TV while you're doing it. You know, sometimes you may just, you know, there were some mornings where I left the TV off and I just did the practice. And, but then a lot of the times I was, you know, trying to do a couple things at once and it's fine because, you know, especially eventually you get the mental focus to let your mind and body work together. And even when you're quote unquote distracted, um, it, it, I mean, it's even that just little bit can have really, really strong benefits. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's a great point that we don't have to like envision things being super perfect or be perfectionistic about it in order to benefit from it. Like it's fine to just fit it into your life in a way that makes sense where you are in your life right now. And just to to, to let it be what it needs to be for you. And it doesn't have to look like anybody else's practice necessarily. Yeah. Um, Well, I think it's, um, you know, interesting for me too, because I became a yoga teacher after 
I had become a really serious mindfulness meditation practitioner. And I, mm-hmm. yes, I discovered yoga first, but as we were talking about, it was, it was really like a vehicle for stress relief for me and of embodiment and of kind of putting my body back together after the, the, <laughs> you know, stress of holding an instrument, which is, is harder than you think. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. I, re- I was remembering earlier that you also had ulnar nerve problems. Like, oh, that's right. Yeah, part yeah. of the reason I'm not a practicing musician is because in when is that in grad school? That was in grad school. It, I it was yeah, it was before we. Well, no, I think it was before we even got married. Oh, I thought okay, we're getting old, so we don't remember details of our life. But <laughs> just thinking, remembering it being in Oklahoma, but I well had to too. stop playing yeah. for a while um, because I had damaged the nerves in my elbows or, okay. The ulnar nerve is the one that runs from your elbow down to your pinky and your ring finger. And I had a repetitive stress injury in both on both sides in my ulnar nerves. So I couldn't really play. I couldn't like lean my elbow on a table to hold my chin yeah. up. <laughs> it's, that, it's that funny bone. Nerve. It's the funny bone you... nerve. Yeah. So I had this like aching numbness in my arms for a really long time. And um, that was, and if I started to practice too much, it would come back. Um, so <laughs> I could t- I could go down a whole other side channel about how that led me to breath work, but I'll save that for another day. But um, <laughs> I, I think, I think you were, you were, you were talking about, how you, you got to mindfulness before you became a yoga teacher and yeah. how that mindfulness was originally for you a stress reliever, like yeah. very, I think very explicitly that you yeah. sought it out for Both that. Both yoga and mindfulness really. Right. Happened that way. But <clears throat> in, but in that order, when you decided to finally get yoga teacher training, you already had that mindfulness piece going into that. Yeah. And I, so I think that from the very beginning of learning to teach, my intention was a lot about the mindfulness aspect and about how to help people be present and how to use the the poses as a vehicle for that. And um, yes, I've studied alignment and anatomy and all of the things, but it always has come back to how the poses help us just be in our body and be more present and certainly alleviate tensions and aches and pains, but, but mainly because of how we want to show up in our life, how we want to be here and how connecting with the body helps us to do that because the body is always in the present moment. So the, the weave, has always been there for me. They're woven together, the, the mindfulness and the movement. So, um, so that's, that kind of leads us to like what we're doing with moved to meditate and why it's called that, <laughs> you know, cause it's all for me about making practices like this accessible and practical for people, like whether their practice looks more like mine or looks more like Mike's, you know, or somewhere in between or totally different, you know, it's a resource and it's a tool. And, um, so, you know, just to give people the knowledge and the tools and the access to take a practice and make it their own and, and make it something that helps them feel better, helps them be more themselves, helps them be more present in their life. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Agree more. I mean, the the threads of these things and what they do for your well-being and the people around you's well-being is pretty incontrovertible for me you know because i started off reluctantly i started off but but i but i learned and like i said you can't you can't unsee this you can't unring the bell (laughs) of of mindfulness and truth and listening to your body Mm -hmm. you know because yeah and what, what did i say earlier you know you you know, it might have been about stress release f- for me when I when I really got into it for myself, but then it became about truth. Mm-hmm. Um, the you know the Buddha's teaching of I teach suffering and the end of suffering, 
that's kind of what I'm talking about. That's what you okay. can't unsee. And your mind, your body and your mind are so wrapped up together in that, that having this mindful movement, you know, however you can get it, I think is really, really important. You know, yeah. That, I resonating yeah. with what you're saying too, because like I said, I started out as seeking stress relief, but it quickly became clear that this was a way to investigate a lot of my existential questions. <laughs> and a lot of my stress was not just like the ordinary day-to-day -day stress, but like kind of the bigger picture of like, what even is any of this? Like, why do we do what we do? Like, why are we spending our time and life energy on what we're spending it on as people and what matters? And so, the, you know, the meditation in particular became a way of not just reading about philosophy or asking the big questions, but of really looking into my direct experience to have a, a kind of more embodied personal understanding of those things, you know, truths as you, if you want to call them that or insights or, um, yeah, those existential quandaries <laughs> and how to relate to them and, and, and like how to live with that. So, so that's, you know, when I say the four M's of move to meditate are, are meaningful, mindful movement that meets you where you are. It's like, we've touched on all of these that, you know, it's, it's part of how we, we look inward to make meaning. And it's, it's this practice of mindfulness that helps us be present in the moment and the movement that helps us be connected to the body. And then the meets us where we are is like, we have to be realistic about this. What works for your body? What works in your life? What works in your living room? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What works with your life is that's so big, you know, because we live in a society in a civilization, even that where we, we have to work to survive. Um, you know, we, we haven't, we haven't hacked that quite <laughs> to something much more compassionate as yet. And so we have to find ways to cultivate and engender that compassion in ourselves and in the people around us um, as much as we possibly can. Yeah. So, and, and I wish I had known that in music school back, back then, because we were just like, we were kick, kicking around and having a great time and stressing <laughs> out. And we didn't know what was going on except for the, for the next practice session, the next rehearsal, the next time we had fun with our friends. Um, and th this is why I think that the work you do is so important because the more people that know this and the more people that can share this with, with their children, even as young as we can get to give people these tools um, to understand what is happening in their mind and body, uh, the better off society is going to be. There's my, there's my moonshot, <laughs> super, super high level goal for, for your work. Come on, Addy, you can do it. <laughs> Thank you. Green, green the brains, green the brains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You always say this to me when I get, kind of imp impatient or discouraged with this kind of work or when I start to feel like it doesn't matter or that people see it as frivolous or, or something. And you always remind me of that, that it does have this potential to affect how people live and affect a worldview and a way that we all could be relating to each other with more kindness and compassion and awareness. And that it's like a, a shift in consciousness that needs to happen in our world. <laughs> and this is, this is one way of supporting that. And, you know, in a way where people opt into and, and we're not trying to force any ideology onto people, but that, it comes from this deep connection with yourself and with having tools to feel more grounded yourself. And then you start to relate to things differently. You start to see differently. You start to connect with people differently. So I always appreciate and need those reminders. <laughs> <laughs> Not just you. I think we all do. Anyone that's 
kind of even gotten on the edges of this, you know, the, the practice is worth it. And, um, yeah, I just, I just really believe that. And, and I believe that it can be a tool for everyone. So yeah, I'm just, I, I'm glad you do the work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really privileged to be able to do it. And, um, thank you for taking the time to do this podcast with me today on our Sunday morning. We've talked for a long time, and I hope that there have been some things in here that people will find interesting or that having a kind of peek behind the scenes at, at someone else's practice could could help like be encouraging or just fun to hear about. <laughs> yeah, thank. I'm happy to do it. And have me back again. We can talk about more things. Um, <laughs> thanks for letting me crash your awesome podcast. Oh, thank you for supporting it and everything you do to even make Move to Meditate a reality. So that's today's episode. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share it with a friend and or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and help others find us that way. To learn more about my work, the Moved to Meditate class library, live online classes, teacher trainings, and private lessons, go to movedtomeditate.yoga. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs>